In this 100 card singleton format, the variance of an initial 7 card hand can be significant, and the mulligan rule offers us a vital mechanism for us players to seek a more playable start to the game. Unlike other Magic the Gathering formats, Commander employs a modified mulligan rule, granting you, or us, the players, a free first mulligan, before subsequent mulligans come at the cost of card advantage. So it's time to dig into how they work, showing you the probability of drawing cards and why your mana curve matters so much when it comes to this. Let's do this. In Commander, you draw your opening hand of seven cards, and if you don't like it, you shuffle those cards away back into your library and you draw seven again. That is your first free mulligan. From this point on, if you still don't like that hand of seven, you shuffle them away again and draw seven more, and you decide whether you want to keep these. If you do, you place one on the bottom and keep the six cards you now have in hand. However, if that seven still wasn't what you want, you repeat this process, but you increase the amount of cards you place on the bottom by one for each mulligan you have performed after the initial free one. It's important to note here that the mulligan rule exists so you have less non-games, games where you don't do what your deck wants to do. This creates a more engaging format, and some people would say a more competitive format as well. And I am still talking about Casual Commander. So for this video I have constructed a basic deck. It contains 9 1 mana spells, 19 2 mana, 17 3 mana, 6 4 mana, 5 5 mana, and two six plus mana spells, and a whopping 41 lands including MDFCs. These numbers weren't just plucked out of thin air, they are from EDH rec. If you take the top 10 commander decks at the moment, Atraxa, Erdragon, Krenko, Sauron, Edgar, Yuriko, Kalia, Lathril, Mirim, and Kenrith, you look at the average deck for all of those commanders, and these are on average how many X spells or X mana spells those decks are currently running. This gives us a very loose average from what is essentially around 280,000 decks or so out there published on ETH Rec, except for the land count. The land count is what I put in because 41 lands is probably what you should be running. I did a video about it, I'll put a card at the top. It seems to me when I'm looking through all this data that a lot of players are running less lands but all are also running a higher mana curve to their deck. So hopefully now I'm going to show you why that's probably a bad idea. So here is the probability of drawing X lands in your opening hand of 7 when you are running 41 lands in your deck. Trust me, you are not at risk of flooding out with this. This is just called game variance and the human bias to always remember those strong negative emotions that we have on that one game that we drew 10 in a row and then all of a sudden removed two lands from our deck afterwards. So as we can see, to have two lands in our opening hand of 7, we've got about a 25% chance. To have three lands is what's most likely to happen, that's a 30% chance, and four lands is a 20% chance. One, five, six, seven, or zero, they're all very slim. If you do manage to pull the whopping seven land hand out of this deck, that's 0.15% of the time you are a very lucky person, go and buy yourself a lottery ticket. If we add up all these percentages, two to four lands, that gives us around a 76.61% chance of drawing two to four lands in our opening hand of seven, which is exactly what we want when we're playing Commander. Moving on to the one drops in our deck, remember we have nine of these. So if we add the one, two and three column up, we have a whopping 49.71% chance to draw between one and three one mana spells in our opening hand of seven. Obviously, it's more likely that we're going to draw zero. So if you want to run one drops in your deck and have them consistently in your opening hand, you definitely need to be running nine. For an exact number, go check out my deck building by probability video. For the two mana cards in our deck, which we are running 19 of, because you can see, we are most likely to draw at least one of them in our opening hand of seven. If we do the same range again between one and three cards, that gives us around a 76.25% chance to draw between one and three of them within our opening hand of seven. Onto the three drops now. Remember, we're running 17 of these in our deck, and odds of drawing between one and three of them within our opening hand of seven is a 72.91% chance. Obviously, drawing one is our most likely, with a whopping 39.99% chance to draw at least one three mana spell when there is 17 in the deck. Moving on to the four mana cards in our deck, remember we are running six of these and this is kind of what we want to see. We want to see a less likely odds of drawing these in our opening hand because we don't want to end up with an opening hand of seven and our hand being filled with all four, five, six drops, that type of thing, stuff that we can't cast in the early game. 
So we're most likely to draw zero, which is 63.64% chance. But to draw between one and three in our opening hand, it's going to be around a 36.35% chance. So yeah, that's exactly what we want to be seeing. And this is starting to prove the importance of your mana curve within your deck. But more on that in a minute. We're running five five mana cards in our deck. As you can see, we're most likely to draw zero of them, which is 68.76. Drawing one to three, that gives around by 31.24% chance to draw between one and three of those in our opening hand. And lastly, onto our six mana spells. Yeah, we're only running two of these in our deck. So the odds of drawing one or two of them is around 13.71%. But as you can see, 86.29% of the time, we are going to draw zero. And that's exactly what we want. We do not want to see a six plus mana spell in our opening hand of seven. So let's start to take a look at the average hand that we'll actually draw with this deck. So here is the average composition of our opening seven card hand, according to our deck. So as you can see, 41% of our hand will be lands. 9% will be one mana, 19% will two mana, etc, etc. I know you can't have a specific percentage of a card in your hand, it's just one whole card or not. So I converted these percentages into actual card values. So 41% of lands is actually 2.9 cards. Rounding that up to the nearest whole number gives us three. I've done that for the rest of them. So our opening hand of seven cards is likely to be three lands, one mana spell, two two mana spells, one three drop, and there we go. That's it, that's your three lands and your four spells all done in your opening hand, ready to sit down and play a beautiful game of Commander. So this is now the part where you jump down into the comments below saying, but I run less land on a higher mana curve and I just mulligan for what I want to see. I mulligan aggressively, I do. Well, the act of repeating the mulligan process does not change the odds of what you draw. It just gives you more opportunities to see these probabilities in action. So if you played a thousand games and 30% of those games, you would start with three lands in your hand. That's like, what? 300 games out of the thousand so you still got another 700 games where you're not starting with three lands in hand that could be more that could be less so let's give you an example of a low line count so if you have a four cmc commander and you're running a whopping 35 lands in your deck with about a 30 percent chance you're going to have a starting hand of at least two lands in your opening hand of seven not a big difference you might say two to three lands hey ho but we can now work out the odds of you drawing more lands so 35 lands in deck Two of them are in your hand. There's now 33 left in your deck, which is 92 cards deep. So that gives us a whopping 32% chance to draw exactly two more lands by turn four to cast your commander on curve. And I'm not sure about you, but I don't really like those odds. I'm not gonna beat the drum about this anymore. Hopefully you have understood all that I've tried to get across to you in this video. If not, feel free to go back and watch again. Drop me a question or two down in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you in a timely manner. But hopefully you can see now that a smooth mana curves allowed you to draw what you want within your opening hand of seven cards more consistently. And also set yourself up for success when curving out during gameplay. So if you have a mana curve in your deck that goes across and then spikes all the way up the end, all your probabilities are lying at the big end stuff and that's most likely what you're going to draw in your opening hand. If your curve spikes at the fours and five drops, that's the bit that you're going to be drawing in your opening hand of seven. That's what you want to see in your opening hand, then that's all good. If it's not what you want to see in your opening hand, you need to shift your curve to get to where you want to be. Now, if you've liked this video, you're probably going to like the video I did about how to build a deck using probability. It's very similar, goes into the probability of how to build an entire deck using this with a turn by turn strategy. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your support as always, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye for now.